What a complete and utter eyesore. Well, you're not exactly Mel Gibson yourself. I was referring to this so-called caravan. It's a disgrace. Well, it might be a bit of a bucket, but it's home to me. What a way to start the day. Enjoying your breakfast, are you? Warm lager. My idea of a cooked breakfast is this. May I ask how much longer you intend staying here? Well, you know what Seth said the other night? <clears throat> As an occupant of Emmerdale and a free man of this parish, I abide by my statutory right to claim occupancy to this common land. So it looks like you're stuck with me. Anything Seth Armstrong says has to be taken with a very large pinch of salt. Hey, don't you go taking my Seth's name in vain. He knows what's what round here. Well, we'll see about that, shall we? I'm going to Hotton Library today to research these spurious claims. Well, you won't find open written down. Uh, I myself recall an ancient bylaw that just about covers this situation. If my memory serves me rightly, the Emmerdale Charter of 1803 states that a landlord is perfectly entitled to evict undesirables squatting within shouting distance of his premises. Well, I've heard some rubbish in my time. So if you don't get this shack on wheels out of here within 48 hours, I'll come down on you like a ton of bricks. Oh, yeah, well, that'd be right, wouldn't it? Because it's always been the same, time after time. Them and us, them as have and them as don't have. It's a disgrace. The establishment's always trampled over us little folks. Now you stand your ground, lad. I can't tell you how relieved I am. I feel like a great weight's been lifted off my shoulder. You can relax now, love. He's gone. It's all over. Nobody gets to me like he does. I only have to look at him and he makes me feel like I've been punched in my stomach. Hey, 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 come on, love. He's gone. He'll never hurt you again. I was thinking of doing a bit for Paul out today. House clearance. You'll be all right. Of course I will, you daft beggar. Hey, you never know. I might pick up a priceless antique. That would suit your ladyship. Forget it. The only good taste you've ever shown is the day you picked me. And it's been downhill since then. No, you won't be saying that when I'm on Antiques Roadshow. Oh, knowing you, you'll come home with some poor old lady's false teeth. Mm, got all the gear. Got all the gear. Well, I'm glad to see someone's happy this morning. You only get one, Dad, you know. He may have left the village, but it's not too late. Leave it better. Make your peace with him, Brit. Otherwise, you'll have this on your conscience for the rest of your life. My conscience is clear. And if he'd have told you even one half of the truth, you'd know to leave well alone. <coughs> I've got it. Butch the Barbarian and the Rat Assassins. Sounds like a pop group. Why don't you just call yourselves the Rat Splatterers and have done with it? It's good, is that? Hang on, so much moving. Be them beans you had for your breakfast. Right, it's supposed to wash them first. Hey! The idea's gone now. People are not tipping me tongue. It's your fault that people are not tipping me tongue. Uh, Zach's rat attack. That won't fit on side at van. Why don't you just call it Zach attack? Hey, lad, we've really cracked it this time. It's you two who are cracked. Who's going to pay good money for you to kill a few rats? It's big business, it's pest control. I'm the only pest control expert round here. I've had enough practice with you lot. Butch Stingle, the grim ratter. He gets his trusty ratomatic sten gun. Drra, drra, die, you scum! Oh, no, please, don't shoot! Drra, drra, ah! Blood runs like a river. <laughs> I like it. Of course, the uh, success of any business depends on... Uh, what is it? Good marketing, eh? Communications, public relations. What we need here is a real pro. You what, Zach Dingle? Somebody to take charge in a crisis. A mature, silken-voiced lady to answer the phone. To calm and soothe the desperate and infested in their hour of need. Me? Aye. Oh, Zach. That was poetry, that. 
What's that you're doing there? Applying for a credit card. Who's going to give you a credit card? It's not for me, it's for you. What? Look, Tina, I don't want to get into all that. Come on, banks are chucking money at people nowadays. Yeah, but the trouble with banks is they have this funny habit of wanting their money back. Eventually. Look, I'll think about it. I better get going. Happy job, Untin. Honestly, Kim, why didn't you remind me I had to see the heart specialist? It's not up to me. I'm not your secretary. Here's young Dave playing removals man for Cathy. Well, the office grinds to a halt. Oh, yeah, well, you're the one who told him to take the day off. Only because you didn't remind me I had to see the specialist. Oh, why don't I stay here, then? I get loads done when I'm left to get on with it. I want you to hold my hand at the hospital. The specialist might have something to say when you tell him about the baby. What do you mean? All that noise and disruption. Can't be doing your heart any good. Joseph has done me the world of good. I feel I've been given a new lease of life. Ow! My finger! I know what. Right then, lads, come on, see up. And you got out stronger? I'm not having my workers boozing on the job. <laughs> Hack up, Lady Muck. I'll Is treat that... you to a pint later. Here you go. Oh, Take more than a few pints to quench my thirst. Yeah, absolutely. It's thirsty work, is this? We'll drink your tea then. Mm. Eight chocolate bickies, aren't we? <laughs> hey, I can't wait till it's all finished. I still can't quite believe it. My very own business. Rather you than me. <laughs> hey, it's going to take some running, you know. I don't know where to start. I have thought it through, you know. There's nothing to worry about. I'm well organised. I've got the finance behind me. All I need now is some good people to work for me, and I've been well on my way. Cathy, I think you're going to have the best tea rooms in the whole village. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. 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 You've got a load of old tie. I was daft enough to pay good money for this stuff. Don't you worry about that, old boy. There's one born every minute. Now take these. Oh, thanks, so well. They're just the job, these. But it'll love them. <laughs> That's the beauty about this job. You never know what you're going to find next. I mean, you could be all sorts of valuable things in this, what? All right. Hey, what can I do for you, gorgeous? It's not you I'm after. Watch her, Eric. She'll try and sell you a granny. <laughs> Interested in getting your hands on something with a bit of class? Only I'm trying to sell a real antique. Mind you, it might be a bit upmarket for your setup. Well, I'm always interested in a bit of uh, quality. What are you selling? A grandfather clock. Very classy. Sounds like my sort of thing. Right. Why don't you come and see me tonight? I'll be at Luke. I don't get it, me. What's a cracking like her doing marrying a dipstick like him? She's not stupid. She knows a meal ticket when she sees one. Aye, but Turner don't. She went around Woolpack asking him to do her catering. He knocked her back. There's a good few bob in that, you know. All them dingles wants a few butties to soak up their ale. Bye. See ya. Thanks. Bye. So what's happened to Love's young dream this morning, then? Turned into a nightmare, that's what. Sounds serious. That man's been lying to me all this time. Oh, don't tell me he's married with ten kids. Oh, look, it's not funny. I'm sorry. Go on. Well, you know he said he worked for Lady Weir. Hmm. Well, he doesn't. Well, why would he lie about that? He's a son. He didn't even have the decency to tell me himself. Yet when Mum who found out, she reckoned I was a bit rough. Perhaps you should talk to him. I've got nothing whatsoever to say to that scumbag. Look, I've got to go up to Weir Hall. They've got a problem with their cattle. They say it's not urgent, but I've got a feeling that's about to change. So why don't we go up later? Well, only if I can be in charge of the cattle prod. Brit, please, you've got to listen to me. Just leave me alone, will you? I'm not going anywhere till I've had my say. <laughs> now. Are you going to let me in so we can discuss our business in private? Or do I have to broadcast it to all your neighbours? I'm not on my own, you know. I only have to shout. What do you think I am? I'm not going to harm you. A monster, that's what you are. You're evil! And I'll never forget what you did to me, never. We've got to put that behind us now. It's all in the past. You may be able to brush it aside as if it never happened. But I can't. 
Have you any idea what you've done to me? You have ruined my life, and I've never felt normal. Never. You've made me feel dirty and used and disgusted by my own body. I'm sorry. Well, what more can I say? I'm sorry. I suppose that makes it all OK now, does it? Well, I know I'm asking a lot, but I need your forgiveness. I'm not going to be around much longer. I'm dying, Brit. I've got cancer. The old ones are always the best, aren't they? You can't believe me. I'm telling the truth. I'm, I'm on morphine for the pain. Well, I wish there was a pill that would make my pain go away. Doctor says I've only got a few more weeks. Well, why drag it out? No, you're probably right. Much better if you die slowly. This is, this is my one chance to put things right and, and you won't give an inch. Don't you touch me! Don't touch Chris? me! <laughs> Make him go! <laughs> you heard what she said. This is nothing to do with you. It's family business. But if you don't leave immediately, I'll send for the police. Brit? It's all right. Don't you touch me. I need to see you go. I have to watch you drive away. If you ever come here again, I'll tell everybody what you did to me. Cos I'll only feel really safe when you're dead. <laughs> Ah, Mrs. Tate. Hello. I thought I'd nip out and have a quick word while Frank's getting dressed. How's he doing? Well, the trouble with Frank is he thinks he's invincible. Tell me about it. <laughs> no matter what I say to him, he doesn't seem to realise the seriousness of his heart condition. If he goes on the way he's going, it's simply a matter of time before he has another heart attack. I'm sorry to be so blunt, no, but... No, I appreciate your honesty. He really has got to slow down. If he doesn't, his next heart attack could be fatal. I'll make absolutely sure he takes it easy. Ready enough? Yeah. Hmm. How much? Well, admittedly, it's a nice piece. Certainly needs some attention, eh? How much are you going to give me for it? Did you have a figure in mind? Three grand. <laughs> Monopoly money, my dear. It's already had a knock, as you can see. I'll give you a thousand pounds at most. Fifteen hundred. There's no wrong with it. Stuff like this fetches thousands in swanky antique shops. I'll give you twelve hundred pounds at most. It's worth double that. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Good. For cash, and I need a receipt. No problem. For six hundred pounds. Oh. Feathering your own little nest, eh? No more than you. Are you sure it's yours to sell? Me and Luke are engaged. What's his is mine. And what's yours? He's your own. Something like that. Mm. So do we have a deal then, or what? Yes. If everything seems to be above board, why not? But do you want me to gift drop it for you? Ah, uh, no. Um, actually, I heard that you have a problem with the catering for your wedding. Don't tell me you're a dab and with a volivant. <laughs> uh, no, uh, it's just that uh, I might be in a position to um, supply you with the booze. At a very competitive price, of course. Well, that's not to do with me. My dad's sorting it out. You'll have to see him. Ah, right. Well, uh, fair enough, eh? I'll, get, I'll pick this up uh, tomorrow morning. Right. He's gone. Who's gone? Ronnie. Without so much as a by your leave or anything, mind you, I think it's more a case of did he jump or was he pushed? It's a bit sudden, isn't it? Mm, I'll say. And it's all down to that little madam, Brit. Oh, she's been gunning for him ever since he first arrived here. Well, I hope she's happy now that she's driven him off to an early grave. Well, Ronnie must have done something to upset her. It's more what Bonnie and Clyde over there have done to Ronnie that I'm concerned with seen anything like it. That Terry came thundering in, fists flying, shouting his mouth off, and not a thought for Ronnie's condition. He didn't hit him, did he? He did. He virtually floored him, he did. Oh, he's a terrible bully, that Terry. There's more to this than meets the eye. Families can be funny things, you know. Aye. Uh, well, that's as maybe. 
But it's Ronnie I feel for. He's a broken man, poor soul. I mean, there he is at death's door. And his own daughter just won't let bygones be bygones. It's criminal. Criminal. Where to next? Robert Field Top, I think. Oh, the Atkinsons? Yeah. Right. Have you got everything? I think so. Hello. What are you doing here? Working for a living. What are you doing here? You know, this and that. Running errands for me, perhaps. Why did you lie to me, Daniel? You told me Lady Weir was your employer, not your mother. Look, I think you must have got the wrong end of the stick. Oh, so I'm thick as well as common, am I? No. Please listen. You think you could just spin many line and I'll fall for it? It's not like that, honestly. Of course you thought I'd do. A bit of a fling, did you? A bit of rough? A village wench with an outfit, a quick roll in the hay? <laughs> Linda. Oh, I'm glad you find it so funny. Will you not be seeing me again, you creep? You picked the wrong one. I'll not be some rich kid's little plaything. God's sake, will you let me speak? It's not like that at all. I'm not like that. Tough! You had your chance and you blew it. Now why don't you run off to Mummy? I love writing me. Hey, don't get carried away yet, lad. There's a lot of our graft to do before the fun starts. Right, I reckon we need a sign to go on top of the van and zack attack on the side, as big as you can. Aye, I bet you're glad you got a brilliant artist in family. What are you on about? You know how Stanley's banged up for counterfeiting banknotes? Not him, me! I could do the lettering and that. <laughs> can you pull them off, please? <laughs> no. <laughs> there are all men of them dogs. You're a bit off your patch, aren't you? Yes, well, I thought I'd just uh, take a drive out, you know, uh, take a breath of uh, fresh air. Aye, that's a big muck, that is. Quality. Yes, I'm sure it is. <clears throat> Sell you some if you like. No, uh, thanks. Actually, I've, I've got a bit of a proposition for you. Well done. I think so. I'm glad this morning's over. Had enough. You're not the only one. He's only sent Daniel off with a flea in his ear. Yeah, well, he got off lightly. I should have punched him. Hell hath no fury. I don't care. He's not messing me about. I'm well rid of that lying dog. Don't show his face round here again. Oh, really? Well, who's that coming up the garden path then? His twin brother? We're shut! Linda, darling! Don't call me darling. I'm not one of your serfs. Oh, please, just let me explain, will you? So, <clears throat> um, congratulations on your daughter's nuptials. <laughs> you trying to be funny? No. Um, I, I was talking about the wedding. Uh, Marvellous news. Ah. Uh, would you like a drink, Mr Pollard? Something from our bar, perhaps? Uh, thank you. Do you have a whiskey? Whiskey? Um, not as such, no. Oh, we seem to have run out. I've got next best thing, though. Ah. Fancy a cream de menthe? Ah, perhaps it's a little bit um, early in the day for, um, for, um, perhaps a, a, a cup of tea, if that's no, no trouble. No, cattle's just boiled. Ah. Uh, milk, no sugar, thanks. There you are. Nibble. Thank you. Expensive business, weddings. So I believe. Might be able to help you out with some uh, cheap booze. Ah? Uh -huh. Yes, I'm planning a trip to France a week or two. Might be able to bring you back a load. I could help you. Help you? What? Could have a go at them French spurs when I were there. I've heard that dead easy. Five hundred pounds should cover it. Five hundred pounds? When am I supposed to get that sort of money? For the booze. It'll cost five hundred. Sounds all right to me. Fine. Ah, huh. well, good. Um, do you have the money on you, or shall I come back? I'm not one what's paying. You'll have to have a word with Luke. Your Tina said I should speak to you. Well, no, you've spoke to me, haven't you? And I'm telling you to have a word with Luke. Tell him you've got my blessing to supply the ale and he'll cough up. Simple as that. Right. You're going, are you? I've made you tea. Hey, that's my mug. 
Shut it, you turnip head, and pass them cocktail nibbles on you, greedy pig. Look at Mr Pollard. He's charming and he's got lovely manners. You animals could learn some of it. Yeah, sit down. These are not on ration, you know. Get some more, yeah? <sighs> Still haven't finished this one yet. <laughs> I hope you've not got to rush off, cos we don't get a lot of visitors in our neck of the wood, do we, Zach? No, no. I say, ain't it a good job? I had a quick tidy up before you come. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Cheers. Look, all the best, sis. Thank you. Here's to you, your new home, your new business, riches, power and eventually world domination. Oh, I like it. Thank you very much. Well, I'm glad to see you're all in a party mood. <laughs> So, listen, I'm having a bit of a session caravan if you fancy a party after closing time. No, thanks, mate. Fancy a bit of an early night tonight. Oh, well, I can see you've had a bit of an offer, so uh, <coughs> I won't bend you down. You are Linda keeping her handsome young man all to herself tonight, is she? Actually, I think it's all off. Oh, dear. Not too upset, though, is she? Well, I left her slumped in front of the TV with enough chocolate to open a shop. That bad, eh? No, she don't eat the lot. We'll have to go and have a stomach bump. <laughs> Alan, have you got a minute? I've always got time for you, my dear. I just wanted to say thanks. <coughs> and I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused. Oh, it wasn't your fault. Uh, I must say, I was a bit worried about you when Ronnie turned up. I know, it's just... No, no, you don't have to explain. I, I gather it's all over now. That's, that's the main thing. Thanks. Hey! What's going on here? Terry, you look after this lady. You've got yourself a gem there. Hey, Moss. Let me buy you a drink. Oh, thank you, Mr Turner. I'll have a malt with you. Uh, and I'll join our good friend, thank you, Mr. Turner. So mind your pint. What are you doing here? Are you off your trolley, Amos? I'm part of fixture and fittings, I am. That's your trouble. You should be at home with your good lady. She's done your world of good as Betty Eggleton. Aye, she's not a bad old stick. No. A man needs company of a good woman in his twilight years. <coughs> Just put it down there for me, thanks. Oh, you're a hard taskmaster. Task mistress, if you please. Ooh, that sounds interesting. <laughs> so, got any other little tasks lined up for me? I might have. Thank God you're not treating me like an invalid. The way the doctor went on, you'd think I was a, a death's door. Should have heard him. Don't do this, don't do that. Well, he never said anything to me. Perhaps he just wants to be on the safe side. After all, he must feel pretty responsible for his patients. I am an ex-patient now. I have made a full recovery. You are looking at a man who is 110%. Prove it. Once upon a time, you and I found more interesting things to do with our afternoons. Mm. I forget. <laughs> Maybe it's about time you refresh my memory. <laughs> 